Welcome back. Now that we're in the share phase of the data analysis process, it's time to show other people what we've found. You've already learned about creating data visualizations and how to use data-driven storytelling. Now it's time to talk about actually presenting the data. Maybe the idea of presenting your findings to stakeholders makes you nervous. Or maybe you're getting excited just thinking about it. Either way, these upcoming videos will get you ready to present like a pro. Coming up, we'll learn about the art and science of presentations, some best practices you can use for future presentations, and how to bring multiple data sources together to tell the whole story. As a data analyst, it's important to find answers and make new discoveries during your data analysis. But it's just as important to share those findings with other people. So if you're ready, let's get started. To make your data findings accessible to your audience, you'll need a framework to guide your presentation. This helps to create logical connections that tie back to the business tasks and metrics. As a quick reminder, the business task is the question or problem your data analysis answers. The framework you choose gives your audience context to better understand your data. On top of that, it helps keep you focused on the most important information during your presentation. The framework for your presentation starts with your understanding of the business task. Raw data doesn't mean much to most people, but if you present your data in the context of the business task, your audience will have a much easier time connecting with it. This makes your presentation more informative and helps you empower your audience and knowledge. That's why understanding the business task early on is key. Here's an example. Let's say we're working with a grocery store chain. They've asked us to identify trends in online searches for avocados to help them make seasonal stocking decisions. During our presentation, we want to make sure that we continue focusing on this task and framing our information with it. Let's check out this example slide presentation. We can begin our presentation by framing it with the business task. Here, in this second slide, I've added goals for the discussion. It starts with share an overview of historical online avocado searches. Under that, a more detailed explanation. We'll cover how avocado searches have grown year over year and what that means for your business. Then, we'll examine seasonal trends in online avocado searches using historical data. This is important because understanding seasonal trends can help forecast stocking needs and inform planning. And finally, discuss any potential areas for further exploration. This is where we'll address next steps in the presentation. This clearly outlines the presentation so our audience knows what to expect. It also lets them know how the information we share is going to be connected to the business task. You might remember we talked about telling a story with data before. You can think of this like outlining the narrative. We can do the same thing with our data viz examples. If we're showing this visual graph of annual searches for avocados, we might want to frame it by saying, this graph shows the months with the most online searches for avocados last year. So we can expect that this interest in avocados will fall on the same months this year. That can even be used in our speaker notes for this slide. This is a great place to add important points you want to remember during the presentation ahead of time. These notes aren't visible to your audience in presentation mode, so they're great reminders you can refer to as you present. Plus, you can even share your presentation with speaker notes ahead of time to make the content more accessible for your audience. Using this data, the grocery store can anticipate demand and make a plan to stock enough avocados to match their customers' interests. That's just one way we can use the business task to frame our data and make it easier to understand. You also want to make sure you're outlining and connecting with your business metrics. By showcasing what business metrics you use, 
you can help your audience understand the impact your findings will have. Think about the metrics we use for our avocado presentation. We track the number of online searches for avocados from different months over several years to anticipate trends and demand. By explaining this in our presentation, it's easy for our audience to understand how we used our data. These data points alone, the dates or number of searches, aren't useful for our audience. But when we explain how they are combined as metrics, the data we're sharing makes so much more sense. Here's another potential data viz that we want to use. We can frame it for our audience by including some of our metrics. There's an explanation of what time period this data covers. Our data shows Google search queries from 2004 to 2018. Where we gathered this data from, search queries are limited to the United States only. And a quick explanation of how the trends are being measured. Google Trends scores are normalized at 100. So now that our audience understands the metrics we use to organize this data, they'll be able to understand the graph more clearly. Using a strategic framework to guide your presentation can help your audience understand your findings, which is what the sharing phase of the data analysis process is all about. Coming up, we'll learn even more about how to weave data into your presentations. So we know how to use our business tasks and metrics to frame our data findings during a presentation. Now let's talk about how you'll work data into your presentations to help your audience better understand and interpret your findings. First, it's helpful for your audience to understand what data was available during data collection. You can also tell them if any new relevant data has come up or if you discovered that you need different data. For our analysis, we use data about online searches for avocados over several years. The data we collected includes all searches with the word avocado, so it includes a lot of different kinds of searches. This helps our audience understand what data they're actually looking at and what questions they can expect it to answer. With the data we collected on searches containing the word avocado, we can answer questions about the general interest in avocados. But if we wanted to know more about something specific, like guacamole, we'd probably need to collect different data to better understand that part of our search data. Next, you'll want to establish the initial hypothesis. Your initial hypothesis is the theory you're trying to prove or disprove with data. In this example, our business task was to compile average monthly prices. Our hypothesis is that this will show clear trends that can help the grocery store chain plan for avocado demand in the coming year. You want to establish your hypothesis early in the presentation. That way, when you present your data, your audience has the right context to put it in. Next, you'll want to explain the solution to your business task using examples and visualizations. A good example is the graph we used last time that clearly visualized the search trend score for the word avocado from year to year. Raw data can take time to sink in, but a good example or visualization can make it much easier for your audience to understand you during a presentation. Keep in mind, presenting your visualizations effectively is just as important as the content, if not more. And that's where the McCandless method we learned about earlier can help. So let's talk through the steps of this method and then apply them to our own data visualizations. The McCandless method moves from the general to the specific, like it's building a pyramid. You start with the most basic information, introduce the graphic you're presenting by name. This directs your audience's attention. Let's open the slide deck we were working on earlier. We've got the framework we explored last time in our two data viz examples. According to the McCandless method, we want to introduce our graphic by name. The name of this graph, Yearly Avocado Search Trends, is clearly written here. When we present it, we'll be sure to share that title with our audience so they know where to focus and what the graphic is all about. Next, you'll want to answer the obvious questions your audience might have before they're asked. Start with the high level information and work your way into the lowest level of detail that's useful to your audience. 
This way, your audience won't get distracted trying to understand something that could have easily been answered when the graphic was introduced. We added in the information about when, where, and how this data was gathered to frame this data biz. But it also answers the first question many stakeholders will ask. Where's this data from, and what does it cover? So going back to the second graph in our presentation, let's think about some obvious questions our audience might have when they see this graph at first. This data viz is really interesting, but can be hard to understand at a glance. So our audience might have questions about how to read it. Knowing that, we can add an explanation to our speaker notes to answer these questions as soon as this graph's introduced. This shows time running in a circle with winter months on top and summer on bottom. The farther elements are away from the center, the more queries happen around that time for avocado. Now some of the answers to these questions are built into our presentation. Once you've answered any potential questions your audience might have, you'll want to state the insight your data viz provides. It's important to get everyone on the same page before you move into the supporting details. We can write in some key takeaways to this slide to help our audience understand the most important insights from the graphic. Here, we let the audience know that this data shows us the consistent seasonal trends year over year. We can also see that there's low online interest in avocados from October through December. This is an important insight that we definitely want to share. Even though avocados are a seasonal summer fruit, searches peak in January and February. For a lot of people in the United States, watching the Super Bowl and eating chips with guacamole is popular this time of year. Now, our audience knows what takeaways we want them to have before moving on. The fourth step in the McCandless method is calling out data to support that insight. This is your chance to really wow your audience, so give as many examples as you can. With our avocado graphs, it might be worth pointing to specific examples. In our monthly trends graph, we can point to specific weeks recorded here. During the week of November 25th, 2018, the search score was around 49, but the week of February 4th, the search score was 90. This shows the rise and fall of online search interest with the help of some of the very cool data in our graphs. Finally, it's time to tell your audience why it matters. This is the so what moment. Why is this insight interesting or important to them? This is a good time to present the possible business impact of the solution and clear action stakeholders can take. You might remember that we outlined this in our framework at the beginning of our presentation. So let's explain what this data helps our grocery store stakeholder do. First, they can account for lower interest in avocados between the months of October and December. They can also prepare for the Super Bowl surge in avocado interest in late January, early February. And they'll be able to consider how to optimize stocking practices during summer and spring. There's a little more detail under each of these points, but this is the basic breakdown of the impact. And that's how we use the McCandless method to introduce data visualizations during our presentations. I have one more piece of advice. Take a second to self-check and ask yourself, does this data point or chart support the point I want people to walk away with? It's a good reminder to think about your audience every time you add data to a presentation. So now you know how to present data using a framework and weave data into your presentation for your audience. And you got to learn the McCandless method for data presentation. Coming up, we'll learn some best practices for actually creating presentations. See you soon. So far, we've learned about using a framework to guide your audience through your presentation and how to weave data in. Now I want to talk about why these presentation skills are so important and give you some simple tips you can use during your own presentations. As a data analyst, you have two key responsibilities. Analyze data and present your findings effectively. Analyzing data seems pretty obvious. It's in the title Data Analyst, after all. But data analysis is all about turning raw information into knowledge. If you can't actually communicate what you've learned during your analysis, then that knowledge can't help anyone. 
There's plenty of ways data analysts communicate. Emails, memos, dashboards, and of course, presentations. Effective presentations start with the things we've already talked about, like creating effective visualizations and organizing your slides. But how you deliver those things can make a big difference in how well your audience understands them. And you want to make sure they leave your presentation empowered by the knowledge and ready to make decisions based on your analysis. That's why strong presentation skills are so important as a data analyst. And if the idea of giving a presentation makes you nervous, don't worry. A lot of people feel that way. But here's a secret. It gets easier the more you practice. Now let's look at some tips and tricks you can use when giving your presentations. We'll go over some more advanced ones later, but let's start with the basics for now. It's natural to feel your adrenaline levels rise before giving a presentation. That's just because you're excited to be there. To help keep that excitement in check, try taking deep, controlled breaths to calm your body down. As a bonus, this will also help you channel all that excitement into a presentation style that shows your passion for the work you've done. You might remember we talked earlier about using the McCandless method to present data visualizations. Well, it's also a good rule of thumb for presentations in general. Start with the broader ideas, the obvious questions your audience might have, and what they need to understand to put your findings in context. Then you can get more specific about your analysis and the insights you've uncovered. Let's go back to our avocado example and imagine how we'd start that presentation. After we introduce ourselves in the title of our presentation, we have a slide with our goals for the discussion. We start with the most general goals and then get more specific. We might say, our goal for today is to first provide you all with the state of the world on online avocado searches. Then we'll examine the opportunities and risks of seasonal trends in online avocado searches. We'll move into actionable next steps that can help you start taking advantage of these opportunities as well as help to mitigate the risks. And finally, we'd love to make the third part a discussion with you about what you think of these next steps. What you'll want to notice here is how our presentation focuses on the general interest in avocados online before getting into specifics about what that means for our stakeholders. We also learned about the five second rule. As a quick refresher, whenever you introduce a data visualization, you should use the five second rule and ask two questions. First, wait five seconds after showing a data visualization to let your audience process it. Then, ask if they understand it. If not, take time to explain it. Then, give your audience another five seconds to let that sink in before telling them the conclusion you want them to understand. Try not to rush through data visualizations. This will be the first time some of the people in your audience are encountering your data, and it's worth making time in your presentations for them. Here's our first data viz in the avocado presentation. When we get to this slide, we want to introduce our yearly avocado search trends graph and explain the basic background we've included here. After we wait five seconds, we can ask, are there any questions about this graph? Let's say one of our stakeholders asks, could you explain Google search trends? Great. After explaining that, we wait another five seconds. Then we can tell them our conclusion. Searches for avocados have been increasing every year. You'll learn more about these concepts later on, but these are some great tips for starting out. Finally, when it comes to presenting data, preparation is key. For some people, that means doing dress rehearsals. For others, it means writing out a script and repeating it in their head. Others find visualizing themselves giving the presentation helps. Try to find a method that works for you. The most important thing to remember is that the more prepared you are, the better you'll perform and the lights are on and it's your turn to present. Coming up, we'll cover more best practices for presentations and also look at some examples. Looking forward to it. By now, you've learned some ways to organize and incorporate data into your presentations. You've also covered why effective presentation skills are so important as a data analyst. Now you're ready to start presenting like a pro. Coming up, I'll share some pro tips and best practices with you. 
Let's get started. We've talked about how important your audience is throughout this program, and it's especially important for presentations. It's also important to remember that not everyone can experience your presentations the same way. Sharing your presentation via email and putting some forethought into how accessible your data viz is before your presentation can help ensure your work is accessible and understandable. But during the actual presentation, it can be tempting to focus on what's most interesting and exciting to us and not on what the audience actually needs to hear. And sometimes, even the best audiences can lose focus and get distracted. But here's a few things you can do during your final presentation to help you stay focused on your audience and keep them engaged. First, try to keep in mind that your audience won't always get the steps you took to reach a conclusion. Your work makes sense to you because you did it. This is called the curse of knowledge. Basically, it means that because you know something, it can be hard to imagine your audience not knowing it. It's important to remember that your audience doesn't have the same context you do, so focus on what information they need to reach the same conclusion you did. Earlier, we covered some useful things you can add to your presentations to help with this. First, answer basic questions about where the data came from and what it covers. How was it collected? Does it focus on a specific time or place? You can also include your guiding hypothesis and the goals that drove your analysis. Adding any assumptions or methods you use to reach your conclusions can also be useful. For example, in our avocado presentation, we grouped months by season and looked at overall trends. And finally, explain your conclusion and how you reached it. Your audience also has a lot on their mind already. They might be thinking about their own work projects or what they want to have for lunch. They aren't trying to be rude, and it doesn't mean they aren't interested. They're just busy people with a lot going on. So try to keep your presentation focused and to the point to keep their minds from wandering. Try not to tell stories that take your audience down an unrelated line of thinking. And try not to go into too much detail about things that don't concern your audience. You might have found a really exciting new SQL database, but unless your presentation is about databases, you can probably leave that out. Your audience can also be easily distracted by information in your presentation. For example, the more you include in a chart, the more your audience will need to explore it. So try to avoid including information in your presentations that you don't think will be productive to discussions with your audience. Sharing the right amount of content to keep your audience focused and ready to take action. It's also good to note that how you present information is just as important as what you present. And I have some best practices for delivering presentations. First, pay attention to how you speak. Keep your sentences short. Don't use long words where short words will work. Build in intentional pauses to give your audience time to think about what you've just said. Try to keep the pitch of your sentences level so that your statements aren't confused for questions. Also, try to be mindful of any nervous habits you have. Maybe you talk faster, tap your toes, or touch your hair when you're nervous. That's totally normal. Everyone does. But these habits can be distracting for your audience. When you're presenting, try to stay still and move with purpose. Practice good posture and make positive eye contact with the people in your audience. Finally, remember that you can practice and improve these skills with every presentation. Accept and seek out feedback from people you trust. Feedback is a gift and an opportunity to grow. And with that, you've completed another module. The presentation skills you've learned here, like using frameworks, weaving data into your presentation, and best practices you can apply during your actual presentations, are going to help you communicate your findings with audiences effectively. Coming up, you've got a weekly challenge. If you want to take a moment to review these videos first, feel free. Once you're done, I'll see you again in the next video. Good luck. 
Congratulations on finishing this video from the Google Data Analytics Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and start to earn the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here, and subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google Career Certificates.